The hash table collection in C-sharp is used to store key-value pairs. But how can we create and initialize a hash table? To create a hash table object, we can use the hash table keyword. So for that, we write in here hash table. My hash table is equal to new hash table. And if you want to initialize this hash table, you can either use the add method to add items to this hash table. So my hash table dot add, let us say one, one, you can add key of any data type. So my hash table dot add, you can write in here two. So the key in this case is a string and then two. And you can add this way more items. So we see that we can use the add method to add an item with a key and a value into the hash table. Key and value can be of any data type. Also, keys cannot be null, but values can be. We can also initialize a hash table by using the object initializer syntax. So after the parentheses, write curly brackets, and then inside here we need to define all the items. So we have pairs of keys and values. Let us say we write in here three, and then three. If you want to add another item, you can just write comma and then provide other values. So another with value 78.5, and you can add other values as well. A hash table can be initialized using a dictionary as well. So let us remove these lines of code and create a dictionary. So I will create a dictionary which belongs to the collections.generic and then in here write integer is going to be the key and string is going to be the value. We name this dictionary my dictionary and this is equal to new and then new dictionary. Let us add two values to this dictionary. So my dictionary dot add and then we add here the value one. Let's add one more value. So let us change the key to be six and the value to be number six, and that's all. Now, to use the my dictionary as an initializer for the hash table, you can write in here my dictionary. And if you want to retrieve the value of an existing key from the hash table, you can use the indexer. So let us say we want to get the value of the key one. For that, we can write in here string value of one is equal to the hash table name, which is my hash table. We need to define the key value inside square bracket, so one. And then the value that we get from there needs to be converted to a string. To see the result, you can write in here console.writeLine and then write in here value of one is equal to the value of one. Control F5 and here we have the result to be one. Hash table elements are key value pairs stored in dictionary entry. So this means that we can cast each element in hash table to a dictionary entry. So let us now see how we can iterate a hash table. We are going to use a for each loop. So for each double tab, change the var in here to be dictionary entry value in my hash table. To see the result, write in here console.writeLine dollar sign inside double quotes right key and the key is going to be value dot key and the value is going to be value dot value to see the result press ctrl f5 so here we have that for key one the value one and for key six the value number six you can also get only the values of a hash table so for that you can write for each var value in my hash table dot values and then you can display all the values or you can display only the keys by writing in here dot keys if you want to remove a certain element from the hash table you can use the remove method so just before the for each let us write in here my hash table dot remove and as a parameter we need to provide a key so i'll just write in here one and then press ctrl f5 to see the result so we see here that from the for each loop, we only get the value six. And if you want to check if a certain value exists, then you can use the contains method. So just contains, and then you can provide key, or you can use the contains key, 
to check if a key exists or the contains value method to check if this value exists in the my hash table. And if you want to remove everything from the hash table, you can use the clear method. So I'll just write in here dot clear, press Ctrl F5 to see the result. And then here we see that we don't get any value from the for each loop. 